your club mm -hmm. dates because this is what I want to do right now. I'm putting all my attention on it. Have you done live stuff before? Yeah, I've done, I've done some live stuff, but this is going to blow people's minds what I do now. I mean, up in Connecticut, we are going to have one big party to kick off the fired tour, Bill. You are a party animal. I know that. Off the air, he is a party animal. I saw him smoking cigarettes and drinking back there before the uh, broadcast, and this is not... The Bill Zimmerman you see on camera is a whole different kind of cat. I got the same impression about you, Howard. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, the Connecticut date is going to be beautiful. And I want people to order their tickets right now. Then, of course, Club Benet is going to be awesome, Bill. Howard, you told me earlier that... Uh, you party animal. Hey, can you still stick that little nail in the box so you can get cable for free? <laughs> I don't know. You ever can do you? that? No, Seriously. No. My father-in-law used to be able to do that. If you, The old cable vision boxes, you could stick a nail in the back. Try it at home. You stick a nail in the, in the back of the box sometimes with it's the box with the two little holes you jam the nails in there and all of a sudden you get in channel 32 36 you see Beastmaster 86 times a day you jam that nail in there I tell you it's beautiful but uh, I don't think you can do it anymore I think they got hip to it whoever owns cable vision and now you know they're gonna prosecute you so don't do it yeah, yeah I think it is in fact uh, yeah they're gonna, like they're gonna find you somewhere so how, how come during the hurricane I couldn't get cable vision for uh, eight days Bill. Well, you probably couldn't get electricity, Howard. No, I had electricity. Cable vision went out before the damn hurricane. I got to talk to somebody here. Because I'm a subscriber, up. you know. You are a subscriber. Yes, I am. What happened to your mustache, Howard? I shaved that off. I got a better hairdresser. I lost 55 pounds. And uh, I look a whole lot better, don't How'd you, you think? Yeah, you do. How'd you lose the weight? That's what you're going to have to read about in my new book for New American Libraries, entitled, tentatively entitled, Dirty Howie. I'm going to outline how to lose the weight, how to look good. I might still be ugly, but Bill, if you saw me before, you got to admit my looks are 100% improved. They are. You know, Victoria Principal writes a diet book, and you look at her and you say, oh, you're going to look like her. You're never going to look like her, especially you, Bill. I don't care what you do. Push-up heels, bra, whatever, girdle, you're still not going to look like Victoria Principal. Here's basically an ugly guy who kind of classed up his act and looks good now, and I represent the everyday man, and I will put it in simple language how to lose the weight. So the book will be coming out very soon. You got the book, you got the live, uh, live tour, you got the NBC contract, you're fat, Howard. That's right, that's right. Well, you know, I'm not in it for the money. I love the people. What happens to <clears> the people who used to work with you on this radio broadcast? Well, what do you mean, what happens well, to I don't them? know, I saw a They're number of people the... in the studio with you while you were doing your radio broadcast. Well, Robin and I are again. still partners, and we're going to be doing the live club, date, club dates together, and uh, there's still a lot of people that, uh, if I decide to go back on radio, I'd love to bring with me. Do you really think that a, that a broadcast that makes a, a show that makes five million dollars a year is is dumped because some buddy well, at RCA if, heard it for the first time? The way I figure it is, if you look at the whole RCA corporate, uh, the radio division is like a pimple on its behind. And the thing is, is that uh, five million dollars to a company that makes billions of dollars is no big deal. So you know that's what kind of happened. Let me tell you something, Bill. I never once. Uh, abused the privilege of being on NBC radio. I always followed directives. You even saw my boss in that little film clip that you did. He loved my show, and I believe he still does. I think some power above him, you know, forced, forced the situation. So, you know, what am I going to do, live in the past? What did, uh, tell me how you were fired. How did this man fire you? The man we saw on the tape is the man he, who fired He took me in his office and told me he was canceling the show due to uh, uh, conceptual, differences. conceptual differences. I said, okay, fine. That was it? That was it. No argument. No, I don't care. Let him do what he wants. Don't call my agent. I'm not hurting for work. You were surprised? Um, I was, I, you know, I'm never surprised when I'm fired, but uh, I, was, I was a little shocked. I didn't think they'd give up the $5 million that easily. I mean, when you're making that kind of money for a station. But uh, that's okay. Hey, uh, you know, c'est la vie, Bill. Certainly it is. Bill Babe. Howard Babe, we'll be back in just a minute. We have to take another break. I'll be back with Howard Stern. And you better think of some good questions. After this. A few years ago, I didn't think a computer-operated job would be possible. Harrison, where experience and elegance meet. Howard, uh, you've been described as a bad boy, a, a shocker. How I want you... you I'm, I am such a bad boy that I want you to spank me, Bill, right now. I'll Come spank on. you later, Come Howard, on. but I no, want to no, know, I wanna, I I wanna know now. I want to over your knee, and I want you to spank me. Come on. Come on. Come on, as hard as you can. Come this on, is cute, Bill. Howard. I'm just waiting for you to get out of it now, Come on, gracefully. Bill. Spank me. <laughs> ah, you're a baby. Thank you, Howard. How would you describe that sort of thing, I would have loved Howard. a good spanking. 
after the show, Howard. How, how would you describe that sort of thing? How would you what describe what you do for a living? You mean that voodoo that I do do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I genuinely entertain people. I make people laugh. We have a lot of fun. That's, that's why we had high ratings, Bill, because we knew how to entertain people. How high were your ratings? I had uh, a 5.7 share. What I don't know that if that mean? means anything to anyone, but uh, it means that, uh, well, in, in, afternoon, in afternoons, from 3 to 7, on the radio, we were uh, the number one radio show with uh, adults 25 to 54 years old. You know, that surprises people. People think, uh, gee, you know, ah, a bunch of kids listen to this show. We had very few teens listening to the show that I did. It's basically a 25 to 54 year old show. And that's why the show was so attractive to advertisers and brought in so many dollars, because we had the right people listening. We didn't have white trash, Bill. A lot of people called in. Yep. A lot of people were offended by stuff you said. Sure, absolutely. And I they think. listened. Absolutely. Why do you think they listened? Well, I think they listened because uh, they were genuinely entertained. And sometimes when you're entertained, you're outraged, and that's okay. And uh, I, I, you know, I believe that people uh, can love you, they can hate you, but as long as they listen, that's uh, the bottom line. When WNBC hired you and you talked to somebody there about coming on the air and doing a show, I assume they knew what kind of show you. Sure, I mean, did. this whole decision of me being fired uh, makes absolutely no sense when you consider the fact that I've been doing the same thing for three years there on the radio. Uh, it's one thing if I came there and in two weeks they fired me because they couldn't deal with it. I wasn't doing anything different. I told you what happened, and, uh, and quite simply, it's got to be the answer. I mean, if there was some kind of investigative uh, piece done on this, which I know you're going to want to do, Bill, mm -hmm. the, uh, I think you would find that uh, after doing the same thing on the radio for three years, that someone must have just tuned in for the first time up there in RCA corporate land and uh, got offended by something I said. It could have been something uh, so stupid, who knows? You know, I mean, who, who will ever have an idea? When you started out in radio, where'd you start? I started out in uh, Briarcliff Manor, which is in uh, Westchester. Mm -hmm. Did you, you know, go on the air intending the first day to do the kind of stuff that your show? No, no, no. I always had a to. dream of doing personality radio program, but I went on the air and uh, played it very straight. And I'm the world's worst straight disc jockey. I mean, when I do, you know, hi, how are you, and the temperature and the whole thing, I'm the worst. I, I bungle that kind of junk. I'm really not good at being a straight disc jockey. I'm good at entertaining people. And you know, Bill, that brings me back to my club dates <laughs> that I want to plug. And that's the only reason I'm here tonight, Bill. Normally, I wouldn't come to cable vision because I'm much too big to be on this kind of thing, and people are probably wondering what I'm doing here. You are a big boy, Howard. How, how tall are now, you? People are wondering what you're doing here, too. Believe me, I got all kind of questions for you once we get off the air, because you look good enough to be on... You could, you could go to, like, Pennsylvania and be an anchor man, get more money than doing this. I can't believe Cablevision is gonna gonna be paying you all that much to be I doing this. I would take a pay cut to pay for your limousine tonight, Howard. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was a nice limo you sent over for me and everything. I'm very impressed. But uh, anyway, let's talk about the Candlewood Theater, Bill. Let me get my plugs in one more time. This is up in Connecticut. Big date, November 16th. It's a Saturday night. It's going to be Party City, Bill. And uh, you and your wife, of course, are invited to come. It's going to be Animal on stage. Some of the things I have planned are awesome. The Dirty Beaver segment, it's going to be, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal. The music, top notch. My band is, we're going to be practicing this Saturday. It's going to be big. You're going to practice this Saturday? Yeah. We're going to have the videos. We're going to have the band. Some of my, uh, you know, we're going to be trading barbs with the audience. We're going to be talking to the audience, and I have a few things to get off my mind about this whole fired situation. More than you've told me here tonight. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the other people at NBC, I mean, for real, and, uh, and what they're like. For some reason, this whole thing sounds like a wrestling tour to me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's not going to be your typical guy getting stand-up comedy and sitting here yapping for an hour. This is going to be uh, multimedia extravaganza, and I know you're going to love it. Also at the Club Benet, November 22nd, Route 35, Sayreville, New Jersey. Two big shows, Bill. It's going to be beautiful. Hey, let me do my commercials. I saw the commercials you run on this show. By Apex Tech and Cookies. Beautiful. Oh, that was your commercial. <laughs> yeah, right. You're done. You got more questions? I want to ask you how you turn from a straight disc jockey into a, a self-described dirt bag. Well, let me, I, you know something? I, there was always the Howard Stern who wanted to go on the air and uh, entertain people. When I, first, when I first got into radio, and this is a good tip for people getting into broadcasting, you just can't go on and, and do your own thing. You've got to build up a certain degree of credibility. And what we did was not to go on the air and just uh, throw everything to the wind, throw our hands up in the air and say, we're going to be complete wild animals and completely uncontrollable. That wasn't the case. I couldn't have kept my job for three years if I was completely uncontrollable. You know that, Bill. 
so we're professionals we entertain people and my dream was always to get on the radio make it entertaining there's enough mundane boring announcers around to go around for the whole new york radio for the whole country they don't need more of that they need me uh, i am the savior of uh, radio i uh, a lot of people need me i know they need me they want me i mean uh... savior of radio look at the holes in my hands all right get the mercurochrome howard thanks for coming by this was fun what a way to kill an evening. Anybody know what happened on Fountain Crest? <laughs> I gotta get home. Hope my wife's taping it. Tape it, honey. Howard Stern, thanks a lot. I mean, that's landing. What's gonna happen to Val's babies? Whew. I'll be back with a late look at the headlines after this.